you to bless God with your mouth. Give God all praise. Hallelujah. Let the praises of God rise within Thank you on today. Jesus. And be strengthened. Be made whole. Be strong Hallelujah. in the Lord.
be glorified for you to be lit all we Start. Come on, praise God all over this place, all over the room today. 
we're walking into a new life. This is a new beginning, a fresh start to your week, a fresh start to your wife, I mean to your life. Hallelujah, God. And now we'll have our announcements. Visit our website at, at rchurchwc.org and click Get Involved tab to sign up. We are presently in need of more servants for the hospitality team, the worship team, and the children's ministry. Our events that we have coming up. Reveal Marriage Ministry is hosting the Love Theory Panel. It's February, sorry, it's Friday, March the 31st. Couples and singles, welcome to attend. Attend this event to learn more about successful relationships. We also have another event, Vision Night meeting, March the 26th, 2023, and refreshments will be served. Tithes and offerings. It's offering time, you guys. <laughs> Here at Reveal, we believe in giving generously and cheerfully. As we sow seeds of faith in tithes and offerings, we expect God to bless us according to his will for our commitment to give. Feel free to, we also have boxes here for cash or, or your tithes in envelopes. Reveal Church has a text to give as well at 833-921-6507. Again, that's text to give at 833-921-6507. We also have cash app at dollar sign reveal church WC. We also have a website, www.rchurchwc.org. Then click the giving tab. And we also would like for you guys to contribute to our Believe campaign drop down menu of the giving page to give towards our building fund. And could everybody stand with me as we do the offering declaration? Everybody can repeat after me. Heaven open, earth invaded, storehouse unlocked, miracles created, dreams, visions, angelic visitations, declarations and impartations and divine manifestations, anointing, gifts, and callings, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls for every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Amen. Thank you, Father, that as I join my valued sister to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increases upon me. So I have more than enough. So I have more than enough to color with heaven and see Jesus and get his full reward. Amen. Glory to your name, Father. Amen. Come on and continue to just bless God right now. Come on, come on, come on. Open up your mouth and begin to worship God. 
I feel like somebody today needs to be reminded that God is champion, that God is the ultimate winner. God makes us winners. God does not create losers. He only creates the best of the best. Are you the best of the best? Come on, I need you to wave your hands. I need you to pump your fist. I need you to act like God has really done something from you. Hasn't he transformed your life? Didn't he help you get stronger and give you the endurance and the perseverance to win the race, to keep moving in faith? Yes, he did. Come on, we need to proclaim today and just give thanks for God being the ruler, being the ultimate champion. Do you believe that on today? Do you believe it on today? Amen. Come on, shout a, shout a hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah. He reigns forever and evermore. These words are really simple. So y'all just repeat after me as we sing this song. Hallelujah, God. It goes like this. Our God is champion. Deliver us to 
For the shift that's happening right now, God. The move of God, the hand of God that is placing on our on our lives right now, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Break out, God. Holy Spirit, break out in this place. Rest, rule, and abide in us. Henceforth and now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God some praise in this place now. Come on now. We got to bring the spirit of the Lord in this place. Now, we didn't come here today to just be lollygagging around. Now, we got to really feel the spirit of the Lord in this time. Listen, we got to usher the spirit of the Lord because there is a shift that's coming amongst the people, amongst the family. And I believe we're in a time where you have to understand what is purpose versus deception. What is purpose versus deception because many of us have been thinking our purpose is on this path that we feel that God is saying but as we know in the word it tells us that God's purpose was always prevail over man's feelings and we have to understand and be king to the voice of the Lord to know that we're in such a time that we got to understand what is our purpose or is this deception? Purpose will lead you into a place of peace, a place of understanding. And deception will take you into a place that makes you feel good and gives you a temporary high to make you think, yes, the Lord is all in this. But I promise you, you are always coming in a place when you're in the deception that you are like, Lord, I thought this was you. And you don't want to have to go back and begin what God started you. So is the Lord telling you in this time, are you being deceived? Are you truly operating my purpose? That's a differentiator in this. Because purpose will give you everlasting life. And deception will take you to a place that you will see that the world can provide you these tangible things that make you feel good for a moment. And many of us have allowed the world to take us and pull us in a place that gives us this high that is only temporary. And we have to understand that temporary blessings will only get you to a place where God's going to be like, now I have to put my hand in it. And we don't want to ever get into that place where God has to put his complete hand in it. And we got to be obedient in this season. Because right now there's so much deception that's moving away people from their purpose in this time. So I feel in this time that we're in a season that we got to draw near. Because you're going to see in the next few months that politics will move people into a place of deception. And you're going to confide more in what man is saying than what the spirit is saying. 
In the next 90 days, you're going to see some things unravel. As you're seeing now with banks collapsing, you're seeing now that people are confiding more in money than God himself, and we're going to be put on notice. So I'm telling you now, find your purpose. What is your purpose? What is God calling me to do right now? This is not the time that you're getting in a place that you're scared to shift. You got to begin to align yourself and your purpose. So if God's saying build this business, you better build this business. If God is telling you to start this ministry, start this ministry. If God is telling you to spend time with your marriage and your spouses, spend time with them because there's something that he's trying to get you to see in the midst. And I don't want any of you to miss the purpose that if you don't mind, give me that song one more time for me. We got to bring the spirit of the Lord in this place because I believe this word today is going to shift you into a place that's going to take you into your nets. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Forevermore.
Lama Usu. Listen to me good. I clearly heard this. God said we have we are coming into a season. That was seven years of harvest when Joseph and God sent him a dream that he had to interpret. There were seven years of harvest. We're in this season where we're going to see seven years of harvest. And this is your time now to store up everything, your finances. Now is to begin to build. Build like you never built before. Because there's coming after these seven years of harvest. It's going to be seven years of famine in this country. I heard that so clearly. There's such an urgency for God to get you in line to your purpose. What you do in these next seven years will determine if you're going to move through the next seven years of famine. What you do now for the next seven years mm, is going to determine if you're going to make it through those seven years of famine. I've spoken this before. In the year 2030, you're going to see diseases come back like you never saw before. God is saying, now this is your window of opportunity to get all that you need because there's something coming that the church is not uh, trying to prepare for. And we have been deceived in thinking things are going to go back to normal. It's never going to be normal again. It's never going to be normal again. I need you to hear this. It will never be normal again. Store up everything that you can in this season. God wants to make you guys millionaires. Not just for your home can be taken care of, but there will be people that God will send your way that is assigned to your life, that is assigned for you in this season to sow into so that they can be helped in this time. This is time for the kingdom to rise up and to begin to push yourself into the purposes and the destiny that God has for you. We're in the season of seven years of abundance before I go in this word. But there will come seven years of harvest. As in the days of Joseph, they prepare for the season of famine so that they can make it through. I don't care what anybody tells you. God wants people to prepare for certain seasons. The Bible also talks about that we should have seven streams of income so that in certain seasons that that income level that was missed, now you have a source of six others. And whatever God has put on your spirit, I don't care if you don't even have the influx that you need in this moment. Begin to make those ledgers so that in this season that God can use something. Because if you don't build it and you set it up fundamentally, an avenue of increase is not going to come unless you set it up. Unless you have intentionality. Unless you set precedence on what you want God to bless. So whatever God is telling you to build, build it. If he's saying write a book, write the book. If he's telling you to start a clothing line, start the clothing line. If he's telling you to set up a storehouse of things to build, build it. Because there's a grace right now that's upon his people. That you're going to see God begin to move in influx. This is a warning, y'all. He's not even letting me go in the word until I, he feels that you're listening. Get this and run with it. Don't look back. This is your yes. Some of you have been asking God, when should I start? I'm coming to you today as a prophet of God to tell you to start it now. This is a time to start it. Even for those online, I'm feeling there's someone online right now that you've been seeking God to give you clarity on when to build. But there's someone that is trying to build outside of the will of the Lord. So what I'm telling you is go into the secret place to get clarity. What you think you need to build is not what God is saying to build in this season. 
God would rather for you to build something according to his will and multiply it in the later time for you to have five different sources that you can't even get time to the one main thing. Find out what is the one thing God is calling you to build in this season. And you will see God do greater works in that one thing than you moving in five different parts. What you put your time in is what will be blessed. Provision is needed. So before I go into this word, we got seven years of harvest. In the year 2030, you're going to begin to see some things happening that you was not prepared for. And don't be the one that's not prepared for. It. Even now, you're seeing a remnant of things. Stock market crashes. Banks. And people pulling money out of the banks. You're seeing a lot of things with America and China. These are just warning signs of preparation. But not yet. God's not going to allow this world to be overtaken by the enemy until his church is prepared and ready. God is a sovereign God. But God is a God of warning. So get ready. So as you continue to stand with me, today's topic, we're going to be talking about purpose versus deception purpose versus deception today's scripture context we're coming out of the book of proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 proverbs 19 verse 21 you guys can have a seat proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 and it says a person may have many ideas concerning god's plan for his life but only the designs of God's purpose will succeed in the end. Let me say this again. A person may have many ideas concerning God's plan for his life. But only the designs of God's purpose will succeed in the end. This scripture here, I love it because this is a, the book of wisdom that I love to go in this season. And we have to understand that no matter what plans you have, it is God's purpose that will prevail. And see, many of us have plans of our own in this time that we think this is what God is saying. But are we truly hearing the voice of God or we're allowing the word of God to cause us to be in deception? And see, whenever you're in a place where you're trying to determine what God's plan is, this doesn't mean that you go into the secret place and you hear God's yes, but you don't receive provision. And see, many of us are moving outside of the provision that is needed or what God is trying to give us in this time. And we got to understand that no matter what you do, no matter what you feel, it is going to be God's purpose that's going to succeed in the end. So I don't want you to get out here and start running, and then you have to run backwards to get the provision that God desired to give you in the beginning. Because many of us, we are hard-headed. I used to be one of those people. We are hard-headed thinking that the giftings and the anointing he got us, he gave us, is going to take us into our place. But only the gifts and the anointings is not for you just in yourself, but the giftings and the anointing God has given us in this time is for God's kingdom to be progressed. So whatever you're doing, if it's not progressing the kingdom, it might not be God's purpose. So we got to understand this. And see here in the scripture, I want you to notice something. The word purpose, not, I mean the word person, it is referencing to someone that's operating in flesh. And see, flesh has no authority over the spirit of God. And see, in this particular text here, God is saying person may have many ideas concerning God's plan. But if you replace the word flesh, it says the flesh may have many ideas concerning God's plan for his life. But only the designs, meaning the creations of God's purpose, will succeed in the end. God's designs in this particular text, meaning his creations. We are all part of God's creations, and we are part of God's divine purpose in the earth. And see, what's going on here in this text, God is saying, you cannot follow your flesh in this moment, but you have to follow the creations, which is his spirit, to lead you into your place of destiny. And see, right now, the church has got in the place, well, I'm going to create my church built on my vision for the church, but we're not really considering what God is saying. 
And see, right now we're in such a time of purpose. And when you're operating in purpose, there's provision on the path that's going to take you into a place where God is going to get you ready for the things that are coming. And see, I don't want you to get caught up in thinking that since you're doing your thing and since you're making all this money, that I'm still in God's will. And see, what happened is we're moving in a time where we think money is going to fix everything that we have. But don't you know money can be given and money can be given and taken to us. And if we're operating in that and when it's taken, we cannot get money ourselves because only God can give us the money that we need. But if you lean on God and lean on him, even though you lost some money in one season, guess what? If you trust God, he's going to be able to replenish what was lost. I don't care if your credit is bad. I don't care if you got a 400 credit score. Let somebody know in this room, like, look, baby, just because I got a 400 right now may not mean I won't have that 750 the next year. And see, right now is the time that we got to start seeking provision for some things. So if God is telling you to build that's going to require your credit, you need to go ahead and start putting things in motion. Go to God and say, Lord, yeah, I ain't got the money to the funding to get my credit established, but, Lord, I'm going to trust that in this season you're going to send the right person to sow into me or the right idea so that I can get the money I need to help invest into my future. Right now, I'm preparing for some things because I know it's, I'm not going to be in corporate America for long. And if you know this, God's not going to have you sitting here thinking that, well, I'm going to keep preaching, keep doing this job, but I'm not preparing for what he has for me next. And see, in your preparation, that is an act of faith in God for God to activate some things in you and, and that when your faith meets with God's purposes now, you're activating God to move on your behalf. And see, we got to understand that we can't sit here no longer and say, well, Lord, I'm going to have faith in you, but you never bust a move. That's like God saying, send me some money, but you never created a business for the other means of the money to come in. And you're doing everything on your own right now, thinking your business is going to grow. But if you're not adding value to your business by getting you help, God ain't going to bless it. Because he knows in this that you can't do everything yourself. You're going to have to get other people that's anointed and gifted just, just like you in order for your business to flourish. If you can tell me one business in the world right now that used one person and they made an empire. If you can show me that, I need to know because, baby... That's impossible. You got to have somebody to help you. AT&T is not established of its own. It has other organizations that confide in itself that has other avenues that make it AT&T. AT&T was built on Bell South, singular. It was built on Direct TV. It was built on Warner Brothers. All those components make the corporation that it is because now AT&T understands that, hey, yes, we have a brand that's across this world, but we need other people to help it make it and grow into where it needs to be. So all I'm saying is you need to tell somebody in this room right now, do you want to invest into what God has called me to do? Because I guarantee there's someone in here that you may connect it to or someone that's out of this ministry that needs to connect to your vision. They may have what you need in order for your business to flourish. And we cannot be self-centered in this time because if you're self-centered, you know that's not even a part of the kingdom of God. You got to understand the, um, the power and connectivity with everyone else. And see, in this particular scripture here, I want you to notice some. Think about this. God doesn't release nothing in the spirit until the flesh or the natural world comes into agreement with God's spirit. As I said before, nothing happens in the natural unless it's been activated in the spirit. Until you speak something out in the atmosphere, it's not going to allow the, 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 the spiritual realm to come and meet you where you are because now we're not in a season where we think something and it happens. Now God is saying, I'm trying to take you higher. So now you got to speak out your mouth to speak those things as to if they were in this season so that whatever God has for you is going to begin to progress. And see, that's how you break bondages in the land. You cannot just go here and think your way through everything. And before you know it, you're walking like, and you're not saying nothing. Now, now listen to this demonstration here. I'm walking, but I ain't going to say nothing. Is that providing you any encouragement? Are you impacting yourself? Are you providing affirmations? But when you start saying, Lord, listen, I know my money is coming this week. Lord, I know that every provision I need is on the way. When you speak to your spirit, you begin to see things begin to activate. You begin to get encouragement. You begin to move in what God has called you to do. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Talk to yourself and you begin to see, you begin to get ideas that you didn't even think that you could do on your own. 
And see, for too long, we have been cultivated to think that, yeah, we can write the vision and make it plain, but looking at it ain't going to do nothing. When are you going to begin to pick those things into action? And see, the scripture here says only the designs of God's purposes will prevail. And see, the word designs here stood out to me. What does the word design mean? The word design in this text means God's creations. What is the creations in this particular text here? God is speaking to you, me, and all of God's creations in the earth. If you think about it, everything God created should operate in harmony. Everything has its place. But when you look in the world, the only thing that doesn't have its place is us. We're the people, we're the creation of God that moves outside his will, and we're thinking that we're the ones that, that, that sets the tone for everything. We're the ones sending her word about, what, God, when I'm going to get my next meal. But if you look at the creations of God and the animals in particular, they don't go a day worrying about how they're going to eat. Even though we're out here killing all their resources and all their food, they still are not worrying about how they're going to eat and how they're going to live. Because they understand that there's a God that's bigger than them, and they understand that God is going to provide no matter what it looks like. And see, we got to start learning from these animals sometime, y'all. I'm just telling you. My baby knows. You know, I watch animals all the time because there's something in them that I need that I don't have myself. They live in, in... in a form of an environment where they have to go out and find their sources of food. All we do is go to the grocery store and swipe a card and we go home and we cook it. They got to go find what they want. They got to analyze their prey every day to see where is the stumping ground that I can go into where I know I'm going to have my source of food today. When was the last time we had to go out and find sources of food that now our food has been handed out to us? All we're doing is going to Publix and Kroger, and we just getting our food. We never now one time had to go out to find our source of food. And see, right now, you got to get out to go find your source. What is the source that God is trying to get you to tap into that's according to your calling? And we got to understand that, that everything under the heavens that has a purpose, what is your purpose in this very season? I challenge each and one of us to go this week and ask God, what is our purpose? You may have been in somewhere in 10 years and trying to figure out, okay, what is my purpose? What do I do next? But sometimes what you've been doing two years, God probably been telling you to shift. Because you have been out of an alignment with him. That may have been your source in this season. But is it your source in this very moment? And we got to be king to the voice of God. And yes, I'm talking to you guys online too, and I pray you're listening. So listen, I hope this word to my online people is definitely sinking into your spirit. And see, the faster you decide to walk in the purpose, the faster things will fall off. It's meaning here, I need two people to come out and do a demonstration for me. No, baby, you can sit down. Come in, DJ. She's taking her heels off, y'all. You know she needed to sit down. Wrap this around my waist. And see here, in this demonstration here, what I want you to understand is that when you begin to have things fall off, now listen, when I try to move, bring some resistance, and I'm skinny, so you ain't going to hurt me, all right? So anytime you're in the season when God is getting ready to do something for you, some of us have people that's connected to us that we don't know how to let go or we don't want to let go because they sit here and listen to every every word that we say to them because I know I can go to them and be petty and talk about all my problems, but you don't realize that those very people are the ones that that's in your life that you can't let go in order for you to move forward. So what God is saying here, as I'm walking, there's resistance. You got people that's pulling you from every direction. I don't care if you go right, you go left, you go back. You can't go anywhere until you get ready to release those people in this season because there are some people that set up for your own demise. When are you going to understand that these very people have, don't even have any good courage for you? They don't want to see you get past them, but what they don't recognize is the anointing and the calling in your life. It's going to take them out of their place where they are hindering, where their foot is stuck in the mud. So we got to understand, baby, in this season, let it go when I run. You got to let go so you can find your purpose and walk into what God has called you to do in this season. So we got to understand, let some of these people go so you can move forward. But as long as they're going to keep you bounded, they're in a place that they're happy. 
Because they're like, you know what? I'm going to keep Shelby down because I know if I can keep Shelby here because I see this anointing. And y'all know evil people see your anointing better than you do. And we got to understand that just because they're around you, just because they don't seem anointed, they got a gift just like that. Because the Bible says gifts comes without repentance. Meaning somebody can be walking in the evil and still walking, but God says, guess what? That anointing is still on them. So meaning they can see all your gifts, all your strengths. They can see that someday you may be able to bless a whole community, but they will rather keep you from there because they are jealous of the calling God has called them to. And they're like, well, since God ain't called me to that, guess what? I'm going to hold them back. And you got to understand, check your circle, figure out who's in my circle that I need to let go in order for me to move forward. And I'm telling you, if you wait too long, you're going to miss the season that God has for you to be blessed. You got to understand this. Anytime God is in a season where he's about to bless you, you have to be extremely selfish with your time. This is not even in my script. I'm going off the Holy Spirit. You got to be extremely selfish with your time. Meaning, just because everyone is coming to you asking for help, it doesn't mean that you got to go and help everybody. Anytime you're moving outside of the will of God that they're not calling you, that God is not calling you to, you're wasting time. You got to do something right now in this season, and you got to have laser focus on the purpose that he's called you to. You got to sit back and say, Lord... Write down every life right now and figure out who's supposed to be with me and who's supposed to not be with me. I have everybody in my life set up in a circle. If they're in my inner circle, they're going to know some of my deeper secrets. If they're in my outer circle, I may just call them to say, pray for me. Now, if they're not even my percentage today out and I can't see them and it's, and I'm, and it's blurry, baby, I ain't telling you nothing. Because I know you're going to go back and tell the devil, hey, this is what he's going to do. So we got to understand the dynamics of relationships in this season because every relationship is very... The Holy Spirit doing, not the Holy Spirit, the Satan trying to get me off this thing today, but it's okay. But listen, so whatever you're doing in this season... You got to understand the power of relationships and you cannot allow relationships to go continue on that you that they're not even connected to your destiny. And see, we got to understand this, that we are God's inheritance. When he meaning God's inheritance, God has had inherited us. There's a specific purpose in the earth that God wants us to do. And God has adopted us all for a particular purpose. And see, the inheritance is not simply silver and gold, but the people whom he loves and who he has redeemed are the ones that God is trying to get to right now. God is trying to get the ones that sit here that's been suffering, the ones that don't have any education, the ones that says, listen, I ain't got no master degree, but I'm anointed. We got to understand that God has an inherited those very people that looks like they can't do nothing on paper. But baby, they ain't the ones praying in the closet saying, Lord, I don't sacrifice my time. I don't sacrifice my career. I don't sacrifice to take care of children. Now God said, I'm getting ready to open the door for these things for you in this very season. And we got to understand this. And how are we God's inheritance? Ephesians 1 and 11 says this. Through our union with Christ, we too have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. But we were even, but before we were even born, he gave us our destiny. That we will fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. I want you to understand this in the word union here. In this particular context, it means the word union means covenant with Christ. Meaning without covenant, nothing would happen in your life that God has ordained. The, at some point, we got to understand and make a decision. Do we want to be under the covenant of God or do we want to be in the covenant of this world? And see, we have set up parameters thinking that we can live both lives, but you can't choose God and choose the world too. You got to choose what covenant you want to be under. You got to choose, do I want to be in unionship with Christ in this season? You got to make some choices in this season. Yes, it's going to be hard for you to make because we know our flesh wants to do certain things. But we got to make a choice right now to say, hey, listen. Are we going to be living for God in this season, or are we going to be under the covenant of the world? 
And see, people want the benefits of covenant with God, but don't want to fall in the covenant with, let me say this again. People want the benefits of covenant, but don't want to fall in covenant with God. Meaning, people want to be married, but they want to live like they married. People don't want to be, people want to be a part of God's purpose, but we don't want to sacrifice for God in this season. People want God to bless them, but God said, what are you going to sacrifice? What are you going to do for me in this season so that I can open this door for you? Everything God does for us is going to require a sacrifice. Do y'all understand that? It's going to require a sacrifice. God is not a God that's just a freeloader and just think he's going to give you something. But God said, when are you going to get in unionship with me? Yes, you're already, you're already a part of my creation, but I have given you free will to decide, do you want to live for me? Or do you want to live for the world? And we got to understand that when we give ourselves over to God, we got to understand there's blessings that God has for us that's going to come in our life that we wasn't even expecting. Some things God wants to do may not even be part of his purpose in the essence. Just because you've been so faithful, God said, you know what? I saw this person being diligent in this season. They'll be extremely intentional. So I'm going to lay some a chair on top of this thing for them. Just because you have been accepting to his word and you have been obedient to his commandments. My question is for you today. Do you know your destiny? Do you know what is God's calling you to do in this very season? If not, we got to go deeper, and it, is, it has to be written in your heart. God writes his purposes and his destiny in your heart so that you can understand that, hey, when something comes against you that makes you want to move outside his will, if it's in his heart, you're going to have this feeling that, you know what, this don't feel this don't feel right. God, you showed me this, but I got this urge to do this. Is this what you have called me to do in this very season? And see, the scripture says this in Hebrews 10 and 16. This is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day. Says the Lord, I will put my laws in his heart and I will write them on their minds. God's laws lead you into a place of purpose. What has been God been depositing in your mind and what laws has he been putting in your heart? We got to understand that God has given us provision, but you got to ask yourself, have you allowed your emotions to override what, what the voice of God has been saying to you in this season? Are you really in the purposes that God has called you to? Are you really walking in your fullness of what God has called you to? And we got to understand this here in Proverbs 20 and 24. It says, it is the Lord who directs your life, for each step you take is ordained by God to bring you closer to your destiny. So much of your life then remains a mystery. God is simply saying right here, you got to understand that every walk that you take, you got to walk right with me every step. Not no step can be going left or right in this season because we in such a world right now, if you move over to the right, you don't know if you're even going to come back. Do you have the power and authority to come back and say, Lord, forgive me because I have strayed away from your purpose, and now I need you to come back to help me get back on this path? And see, you got to understand here, too, it's saying sometimes some things are a mystery which God doesn't desire to be a mystery. When was the last time you went in God and started asking God, show me the secrets of this earth? You got to go deeper and so deep into God in this season that you got to want to know what is the mysteries of this earth. There are things God has revealed to me that some of you guys won't even believe if I told you. Because your spirit has not been in tune to receive such a fullness of something. God has shown me even the inner depths of the earth and what compared to what man says and what he said. God has shown me the ends of the earth through dreams and visions compared to what man's saying and what he's saying. There's some things that man has instilled in our spirits that if you really got the revelation for God, you won't even, under, you won't even understand. You'll have a hard time receiving it. There are secrets that God will, wants to show you, even about yourself, that God wants to reveal but you got to understand this. And the reason why some of us don't want to, don't even know the mysteries of ourselves or the mystery of this world and what God is doing is because we confide in so many other people, but we're not allowing God to direct our path. We got to understand in this season, not your mama can direct your path, not your daddy, not your sister, not your brother, not even your path, your, not even your pastor. The pastor, I'm, my job is to plant the seed so that God can prune your heart 
to receive what was deposited so he can direct you. It is not even my responsibility for the growth of this ministry. It's my responsibility to give the word that he put into me. And he do the work after the word is planted, after the seed is placed. He is the one that comes in the midst to change the heart. So we cannot confide in what man is saying. And I know this may sound like, Lord, my mom and dad have been raising me all my life. But there's only so much your mom and daddy can give you. Because they've only been exposed to so much. But we got to start confiding in God. But I promise you this. If you can confide in God, I guarantee you, your mom and your dad and your sister, your brother and your sister would not have no worry in that. Because God is not going to make you cause friction in the midst of your family all because you're di he's directing your path. God's going to be like, well, baby, since you're leaning on me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to heal. I'm going to heal your mama and your daddy so that they can understand what has been happening in you. There was a season where when you, whenever you change and God is directing you, yes, it's going to be friction amongst the people. But you got to understand that anytime you're growing in spirit and trying to receive things at a newer level, at a higher level, that it's going to cause some friction. Friction is good sometimes, y'all. Friction is not a bad thing. Friction means something is changing, but I don't understand it. That is a signal in our spirits that lets us know that, yes, something is changing. Right now, some of us are feeling in our world that there's something's changing, but I don't understand it. And we, and God is trying to give us insight to this, but are we really taking time to confide in our stuff what God is saying? Are we really taking time to get deeper into what God is saying? And see, what's, and see, the reality of this situation is this. There was a time in my life that I was in a place where there was friction in this ministry that I was serving in. This was the time that God was calling me higher and calling me to a different place. But because I confided in things in traditional and religious ways, and I allowed my loyalty to, in people to outweigh my loyalty with God, God had to send his angel to give me confirmation. There was a time where I was trying to figure out, Lord, I know there's more, but if I leave something that I'm accustomed to, I don't know where I'm going to go. It don't feel good to me. But God said, look, I'm trying to do new things in you. I'm trying to get you training and develop, but I didn't want to leave this ministry because I was comfortable with it. It's because they married us. They did our premarital counseling. They was family friends. But God was saying, who are you going to have your loyalty into in this very season? Is it me? Or are you going to have loyalty in man? And I remember this day. God told me, if you don't move right now, your life is going to get in the place of stagnation. And that was the most uncomfortable words because I'm a very progressive man in my approach. But I'm saying, Lord, how are you going to make me stagnant just because I'm going to leave a church? I sat there and I argued with God. I said, God, how are you going to tell me to leave a church when I got developed in? The people who love us, who married us, who did our premarital counseling. When I was going through my bankruptcy, they helped us. They provided for us. They gave me insight. But God said again, where is your loyalty? Is it in man? Or is it in me? God had to send this angel into my bedroom. And this angel came in the mist at 3 a.m. at night. And I'm sitting there seeing this light in my room that I couldn't even bear the light. My first response was I started hitting Shelby. And I thought I think I punched her every two, one or two times. And she did not wake up. And I'm like, this girl, why she ain't waking up? And I'm like, Shelby, and I hit her with a swing. Bow. She was, she, this girl was in a dead sleep. I'm like, why she ain't moving? But it wasn't for her to see it. God was trying to get my attention, and I saw this light. And I said, Lord, I see the light, but what is this is in my room? God literally had to lift me out of my own body, out of my flesh, and my spirit was looking at me sitting up in the bed, which y'all would call the out-of-body experience. And when I turned around, I saw this huge angel. Had to be at least 15 foot tall. And it was sitting there. And it had wings as if it was arms. It was just very unorthodox. And I'm sitting here and it's just smiling at me. And I'm sitting here like, what in the world is they looking at me like it's a problem? What did I do? And the whole entire time, everything that I thought, it responded to me telepathically. It was telling me every thought, every emotion, every doubt that I had. But it said these words. I have come by the Spirit of the Lord to give you a message. 
Because the angel placed a fear in me that I didn't even understand. And because it looked a certain way that man has been taught angels look like, he was like, no, baby, this ain't what it looked like. And it's sitting there, and it told me this, these two words. It said, it's time. And the angel confided himself to a ball of light and left my room. And then I heard this voice, and it said, my son, it's time to rise up. And it was a voice that was soft, was commanding, but it brought a fear in me that I never turned back since then. And I had to leave that ministry in order to get into this particular place because God understood the power of development. God knew I needed more schooling to get me to, into a place where I was ready to fill its purpose. And sometimes God will bring you out of your comfort zone in order to bring you into your destiny. How many of you are sitting right now in a comfort zone and you're thinking that I'm going to sit here every day of the week. I'm going to serve in this place. I'm going to do what God called me to tell me because it's comfortable, because it's easy. It brings such a joy. It brings such a peace in my spirit. But when are you going to make a choice and say, Lord, I'm ready to grow? Because God don't use you in your comfort zone. God uses you in a place of uncomfortability. When are you going to say, Lord, I'm ready to be uncomfortable? And see, some of us want to stay right here at this line and say, Lord, I'm not going to step over it because I know if I step over this, it's going to require me to invest some money. It's going to require me to create new relationships. It's going to require me to have some hard nights. It's going to require me to do something I don't want to do. When are we going to say, Lord, I'm going to sacrifice all I got for you because I know everything that I have now you have given it to me. If you provide for me in this place, you're going to provide for me on the other side of this line. When are we going to make that choice to say, Lord, I'm ready to expand you in your fullness? We cannot be fearful in this season just because it's something that we're not used to doing. Because some of us, we say we want this million dollars, and we're looking at it right here, but when are you going to step over the line to say, Lord, I need this million dollars? When are you going to say, Lord, I don't want to stretch a little bit out of my place? It's because you provided for me right here, so I'm going to stay. Some of us are not seeing the fullness of our blessings it's because we don't want to step over the line. When are you going to jump off the cliff and say, Lord, I'm going to fall, but I know you're going to catch me? When are we going to make them kind of choices? We got to make some uncomfortable choices in this season that only that because the only way you're going to get your nets. It's by making uncomfortable decisions that's aligned to God's purposes. And see, some of us feel like we can't recover from past stumbles or bad choices that we've made. It's almost like some of us don't even want to forgive ourselves, and we sit here in this place of complacency. It's because you said, Lord, well, Lord, I stepped over the line last time, but I lost everything I had. I Stepped over last time, but I lost everything that I had. When you're going to say, okay, Lord, I know I stepped last time, but maybe I missed the provision. Maybe I missed what you told me to do. Maybe you, I missed the direction you told me to go. Maybe I moved too fast. But this time, you can cross, but before you cross, you better get every piece of provision that God needs to, get for you, that God needs to give you in this season. Because in his provision, he's going to be able to give you things. And I want to understand, and I want you to understand this. Just because you made some bad choices and stumbles in last season, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to, to overcome these things. I want you to understand this. Listen to the impact of this story about Moses. Moses was a murderer, but God still used him. Listen to the context. Moses was a murderer, but God still used him. But the one time Moses operated in disobedience, he didn't kill nobody this time. He operated in disobedience. But then, because he operated in disobedience, guess what happened? God didn't allow him to go into the promised land. And see, sometimes we look at the, our sins and say, well, I killed somebody before, but God allowed me not to go to prison. But now you're still holding on to this sin, and you're saying, well, Lord, I don't want to cross it because I don't want to do it again. But God is saying, baby, cross over. I just need your obedience. Moses didn't enter the promised land because he killed somebody. He didn't enter because he was disobedient. 
Because he struck the rock when God said, use your mouth, use your voice. But instead, he struck the rock out of frustration. All because he let some crazy Israelites get under his skin. And we got to understand this. Just because you messed up in the past don't mean that God won't recover you. There was a time I went through a bankruptcy all because of my mistakes, and I put my, my family into a place that hurt them. But you better believe I didn't allow that to hinder my development, my growth, and my progression. This time I say, Lord, I learned. So look, before I cross this line, Lord, hey, I crossed it before. But what do I need to do now before I step over there? God said, now, my son, you get it. Because before, I just ran. And then I got to a place, and I looked back. I said, oh, I didn't receive the provision that I was supposed to get. Now God don't took everything I got, and guess what I had to do? I had to go back over this line and look at it again this time. Now I said, well, Lord, I ain't moving until you tell me to move. When was the last time you checked yourself to say, Lord, yes, I know you're telling me to move, but, Lord, I don't know. Another person in the Bible, David committed nursery, adultery, and he was a murderer. God still made him the king. You can't let your past define you. You can't let your past mistakes define you. God used Noah, but he was a drunk. Just because you were an alcoholic in the one season don't mean God can use you. Sarah was impatient, her and Abraham. And I know Shelby ain't going to dare let me do that mess that Sarah did. <laughs> Sarah told her husband to go have sex with another young woman. Baby, that devil is a lie. Because I got to go to sleep at night. I ain't got to have a, t uh, a night to my neck, y'all. I know she, she saved, she sanctified, but she, she crazy. So Rodney ain't stepping over that line. Because I got to go to sleep at night. I need my comfortability. My house need to be in peace. And see, we compare ourselves to the world. But do we recognize what value we possess for the kingdom? Many people look at the worldly people today and say, it look like they're getting blessed. They're getting all these millions. They're getting everything. But the, the folks in the church, we still living paycheck to paycheck. We still looking like, Lord, listen, I'm tired of not having what I want to go on vacation when I want to go. Lord, I'm tired of when people ask me for money, I never have it. But you want to know the thing about the people of the world, what they do well? The very principles that the Bible tells the people of God to use, they use them. But we sit here and just have this faith. Well, baby, my grandma told me to be faithful. I'm just going to sit on my couch and watch CNBC News all day. But I will never put it in the work to attain it. I don't use biblical principles to attain it. And see, the key in this is that we cannot be allowing the world to outdo the kingdom. God can change them, but what I'm saying is you're sitting here asking why I look like the people who out here clubbing every night, out here getting drunk every night, smoking weed, snorting crack, but they look like they got all the money in the world, and they wake up, baby, I, I just sold my company for $2 billion, and they just did a line of coke. It's because they took the time to build their establishment. They used biblical principles. All I'm saying, the principles of God, it works, but the kingdom don't use them. It's very awesome, ironic. Why don't we use what God has given for his people to build his kingdom? We got to understand that these principles were not just for those people that's living in the world. It was created for us, but they open the Bible more than we do. They on stocks using biblical principles and say, well, listen, I know the power of sowing. So therefore, if I sow, I'm going to reap. Guess what they do? They go send a $100,000 check to a business. They don't sow now they reaping. Principles don't stop at people in the world. Whatever God put out here in the world for us to use, they're going to reap the benefits. So while we can't sit here and reap the benefits of things, God don't want his people to be broke forever. I was broke one point. I didn't have a dollar to scratch against each other. But guess what? When I start applying God's principles and having faith and believing what God has and putting the work in, that is when God starts using for you. For example, in the year 2021, I wrote down a vision for what I wanted God to accomplish. Everything accomplished in that year. But it was one thing I said, Lord, I want to get all my bills paid off. Well, God said, well, what you going to do? 
I don't give you, I don't gave you the mind of Christ. I don't gave you a, a mind to be an entrepreneur. You are so creative. You know how to market. I put you in an organization to teach you all these things. So what you going to do? Are you going to bust a move? What you going to do? And I'm sitting here like, Lord, what well, you told me you're going to give me this. Well, baby, listen, I've given you enough. You already have what you need. You got to use it. All of a sudden, I start sitting down. I start thinking. And this is, comes after the fact that I told my wife our house is going to be sold, but I didn't think that our house was going to be connected to us paying off our bills. God told me to look around and walk around your house. And I'm looking. I said, well, Lord, I'm looking. I see it. But I got a wife over here that done prayed this house for the last five years, and she got it. And you mean to tell me I'm going to go against everything she prayed for? I said, I got to hear the argument, not you. God told me, keep looking, my son, keep looking. I'm looking, and I said, okay, God, I get the picture. We're going to have to sell my house. Didn't realize that God was going to use something that we prayed for to be something to bless us. Then once he sees you moving, then he gave me a house, 2,000 more square foot, bigger than what I had before, and also to pay for a price $200,000 less than it really was worth. So what I'm saying is sometimes the things you pray for, baby, don't hold on to them forever. Sometimes you got to use that as a seed for your nets. I'm giving you biblical principles. Sometimes you got to use what God gave you through your prayers and suffering as your seed for your nets. God told me my car would be paid for. And I said, Lord, do I want it? God said, well, you're going to get it. Car got paid for. Four months later, God said, now give it away. I said, why? Lord, I just paid for this car. God said, now this car is not a blessing to you. It is a seed for somebody else's blessing. So what you have, you're going to have to give up in this season, and you're going to have to sow like you never sowed before into other people to get your blessing. Sometimes your sowing and speaking into other people's lives is going to activate for you. God don't want us to be selfish with our, with our time, with our money, with our relationships, with our knowledge, with our wisdom. God's saying spread the wealth so that the kingdom can advance. And see, in Galatians 6, 9 through 10, it says, Don't allow yourselves to be weary in planting good seeds. For a season of reaping, the world, in the season of reaping the wonderful harvest you have planted is coming. Take advantage of every opportunity to be a blessing to others, especially to our brothers and sisters of the family of faith, meaning this is the body of Christ, the church. The church ain't just this building. The church is the people that sit up these seats in this very moment. When was the last time you planted a seed not to yourself but to others? Sometimes we ask too much for ourselves but don't realize us activating for someone else is going to bless you in the midst. A lot of my blessings I got was because I activated into someone else. We gave away a $6,000 bed that was only made 1,500 of them in the world, and God said, go give it to a homeless, or this homeless lady that has been through domestic violence that needed a bed that she couldn't even afford. We gave it away, mattresses and all, and we gave away a car. We gave away uh, uh, dishes. We gave away decorations for the wall. Matter of fact, we gave away a refrigerator that was never given to us. We sold and sold it to others in order for us to get to what we get to what we've been asking God for. And see, the world is telling us, baby, keep praying. Keep praying for yourself. You're going to get everything you need if you keep praying. Yep, God going to get to a point. He's going to say, so when are you going to sow into somebody else? God said, you have the seed for somebody else's blessing. And we don't realize that all of us are connected. That same blessing may come around to you in return. And that same person you bless may be the one person that you're going to need in, in a particular season. And they're going to remember you because you sold into them. There was a season when I hired somebody when I was a store manager, and he had been in the company 12 years, entry level. Nobody never gave him an opportunity to go to management level. But here come Brother Rodney. I had just got my store. I had got my first store to manage again. I already was nervous. I said, Lord, this store is in the bottom of the world. Literally, in our nation, that store was number 450 out of the 450 corporate stores in AT&T. And AT&T was getting ready to close that store because it wasn't making no profits. And I said, Lord, why are you sending me here? I'm going to get fired. Like, wh why are you sending me here? 
But all of a sudden, God said, you're going to build this team, and you're going to see my hand in it. I end up hiring this brother named Lamario Latham. Never met him in my life. I had two choices, to hire Lamario or hire the number one selling person, person in at and that was going, getting the highest award in the organization. Naturally, I'm going to hire the person that was the top seller. God said, no, you ain't going to get him. You're going to get him. Because I've been promising him this for 12 years, and you're the seed to get him into this next level. I'm scratching my head. I said, Lord, this conflicts everything about success. I'm scratching. Even my director and my VP said, no, you ain't hiring him. I said, man, I got to hire him. And they didn't believe in God, but I told them right in front of them, I said, God told me to hire him. And the man, <laughs> the man respected me so much, he said, Rodney, go ahead. I know what you've done because you got here because of what you've done. Ended up hiring this brother. Was one of the best decisions made in my life. The store went from number 450 to number 15 in the nation in three months. That opened up me another opportunity in a position I never had experience in. I only applied for one position. That was me to get into the company. The rest of the position was called randomly. Don't know these people. We just send your numbers and we want you. I said, okay, I'm here. What you need? Make my money right. I'll come. So I went into the position, but fast forward, I'm starting this ministry, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm a manager on the sales side, and I said, Lord, I don't have the time to do ministry and work full time. I said, I need my benefits, and I need this income, Lord. The church ain't ready for that yet. We ain't there yet. God said, I understand, and I'm grateful that you asked me for this. So I said, well, Lord, I'm going to put it in your hands. I'm starting a church in September. It's July. I said, Lord, I got a month and a half. It's time to start the church. I need to have time to build your ministry. That same person called me out of the blue. And he said, Rodney, I got a position. I've been promoted three times since then. Now I got a position I can make some decisions. So I'm sitting here like, what you mean? I said, you going to hire me? He said, Rodney, I want to hire you over here on the global analyst side. Didn't have a lick of experience. My degree is not in that. I don't know how to use a cell like that. I don't know how to do none of this stuff. I said, well, Lord, listen, I will learn it, though. Never had to interview. He called me. He said, the job is yours. And I said, Lord, now you got to make the money good. Now God said, since you want to be obedient to me, and you ask for what you needed, not for what you wanted, because you're trying to do the will of my ministry. Then I end up getting more money. My salary increased over $35,000 a year, and I got 11% bonus on top of that every year. So what I'm telling you is this. When was the last time you sold into somebody else? When are you going to trust God enough to make you and take you to your nets? Because I'm telling you there's power in sowing. There's power in sowing. And I'm prophetically telling you right now, when was the last time you sold into someone else? And see, so what Satan wants to do is he wants to cause deception in you so that it can hinder you to sow into someone else. Think about the story of Adam and Eve. Eve was tempted. Satan didn't go to Adam. He went to Eve. He sent him to Eve. Eve got the apple. She chewed it. She swallowed it. And she walked over to her husband and said, baby, the Lord told us not to eat the fruit from this tree. But you know what? Nothing didn't happen. Nothing happened. But as soon as she got that apple and he took it and he bit it, that's when everything started changing. She went to the foundation and broke it all up, all because of disobedience. And Adam was the one guilty because guess what? God was the one that gave him the word. He was supposed to be the foundation to the home and establish it and to do everything in the earth. Because people forget, God has given you dominion and power to do certain things in the earth because God didn't create the name of the animals. Who created the name of the animals? Adam, God said, you have dominion over everything in the earth except the humans. All the animals, all the birds, all the trees and the seas and the fishes. God said, we got dominion over everything in the earth. But the one thing that you don't have dominion over is man. And when, when Satan can get to the foundation of your home, of your business, whatever it is, it's going to tear everything else up. What is your foundation in this season? And we got to understand this is this. Don't try to put out every fire too soon. And sometimes the negative orchestrates the good in your life. 
the negative orchestrates the good in your life. Meaning, just because your life may seem like it's out of, out of, out of whack, how don't you know God is using this season and this time and the negative that you see to be negative as a tool to usher you into your next? We, our minds and our perspective got to be in place in this season. Because properly placed perspective prevents problems. The five P's. Properly placed perspective prevents problems, meaning just because you see your world may look like it's in shambles, how you know it's not activating you for your nets? Everything in the world is perspective. Everything in the world, you have to have the mind of Christ. Just because it looked like Jesus died and he suffered, but guess what? That activated a place for us to be able to continue to fulfill the gospel. Yes, he died for our sins, and people are like, well, why they beat him so much? Why they just can shoot him? But that was the form God wanted him to go through. Who were us to say what was the right and what was the wrong thing? Yes, that suffering was bad, but guess what? That suffering allowed us to be here today so we can fulfill God's purposes. And as I come to a close here, I want you to read this. As I come to a close, Jeremiah 17 and 9 through 11 says this. The heart is deceitful above, above all things. And beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct. According to what their deeds deserve. Like a patriot, which is a bird that hatches eggs. It, is, it did not lay are those who gain riches by unjust means. But when their lives are half gone, their riches will desert them. And in that end, they will prove to be fools. The Bible is saying here about the word deceitful that stood out to me. Why is the heart deceitful? The heart in itself is not deceitful. It is what you allowed in your heart to make your heart deceitful. When we have a deceitful heart, you haven't allowed your heart to get into the place of the purpose in the, of God. And we allowed deception to get in there. And now it's almost like it's been birthed in your heart. Like it's been connected to something that it should not be connected to. So when is the moment that you're going to get your healing so that you can walk in your purpose? Your healing is connected to your purpose. And see, the heart is only a product of what has been put inside of it. The heart itself isn't deceitful. It's what allowed in the heart that makes it deceitful. And, and this, is, this is why the, heart, the Lord says, I search the heart and examine the mind is because he knows when you're ready to receive. And God only blesses according to what you deserve. Do you feel that you deserve to be fully blessed as God desired for you? What are you going to do in this season that's going to get in alignment to God to be deserving to give you what he desires for you? Because you cannot receive something out of season. You guys can begin playing. You cannot receive something out of season in this particular moment. Because if God gives you something out of season and that you're not ready to use properly, guess what it does? It corrupts the heart. It puts the heart in a place of deceitfulness. And then what begins to happen is because your heart is in deceit, you're not going to be able to sow into what God told you to sow into. You're not going to be able to do what God is trying to tell you to do. You're not going to be able to bless those who God is telling you to bless. You're not going to be able to receive the fullness of what God wants you to do. You're not going to be able to walk in your marriage in this fullness. You're going to be blocked from what your purpose is. Purpose is bigger than just you making money, than you building the business. Then you build in the business. Purpose to me is saying, am I whole? And I'm standing in right standing with God. And I, am I receiving what God needs me to receive? Am I walking in, on this path of righteousness? Am I using my life in the way that is pleasing unto God? Am I blessing my children to be blessed properly? Am I sacrificing my own, needs, my own needs to make sure that my spouse is in the place that he needs to be in? Am I loving properly? Purpose is also aligned to what you do in your house. Am I sowing unto other people? Still purpose. 
Am I sowing into myself? It's still a purpose. Am I giving myself enough time to be in this place of the Spirit of the Lord? Am I doing the will of the Lord? Am I operating in integrity? Am I virtuous? Do I have a place where my vision is being birthed? What is your purpose? And we have to get back right now with God, if you're online as well, to know what is the purpose God is calling us in this season. We cannot run away from our purpose because our purpose puts us in a place of uncomfortability. But in that uncomfortable place is where you're going to grow. That's where your blessings are going to be coming in in this season. And we got to understand the importance of it. Find your purpose. Because we're in a seven years of grace, seven years of fruitfulness. It is literally here, but are you going to walk in it? And the only way you're going to receive the fullness of it is if you sacrifice. Cross over that line to know that God is with you and that he would never leave you or forsake you. Jeremiah 29 tells us is that, for I know the plans I have for you. Thus says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. When are you going to make decisions to say, Lord, I give myself away to you? And understand that God is with you every step of the way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and we got to understand that every step that we take is ordered by God if it's in his will. Don't miss this season of blessings, all because you're fearful of stepping over. The Bible tells us God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Walk in your power. Walk in your authority. Be sound in your mind. Be sound with the Holy Spirit, which makes your mind sound. But also do everything in love. The greatest commandment in the book, do everything in love. So if you're here today and you know you want to get your life over back to God and you just need prayer, if you're in the building, you can come to the altar. But if you're online, just simply say, I need prayer. I'm ready to give myself away to God again. And we'll be sure to have someone to reach out to you to give you some information so that you can get connected to us. So if you know, if you're in the building and you need prayer for whatever it is right now, if you need clarity for your purpose, if you need clarity to your vision, if you need clarity for whatever God is trying to get you to do, if you feel like you're frustrated, and you don't understand what God is doing. I prophetically speak this into your life right now. That tomorrow you will wake up and begin to receive understanding. You will wake up to begin to receive clarity. You will know who you are called to be in this season. That you will not doubt the move of God. That you will begin to confide in the Holy Spirit. And you begin to look up to the heavens where your help come from. So that you can know that I am chosen in this season. Many are called, but few are chosen. What choice are you going to make in this season? Is there anyone in the room that could come to the altar to receive prayer? This is not a time to be shameful because all of us are dealing with something. That's just part of life. The Bible tells us we will always fall short of his glory. And we got to understand that we will never be perfect creatures, but we can make ourselves 1% better every day, that we are faithful servants into his kingdom. The Bible tells us in the day of judgment, God said, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. God is not looking for perfection. He's looking for faithful, meaning he already understands that you're going to fall short sometime. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do in this season? There's a sound in the heaven that God is calling his people. You have to have a desire to come closer to God. You have to have a desire to get intimate with God. You have to have the a desire to seek your salvation. Repentance is important. Disobedience is always not killing or lying. 
or not moving at the time God tells you to move. But disobedience has also been stagnant and having pride in the midst of a situation. And we have to understand that our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. Here at Reveal Church, we're a hospital that wants to save souls. We want to have you delivered for whatever's been having you bound. This is a season that you got to release everything that's had you bound because there's a purpose just for you in the heavens. There's a purpose just for you here on earth. There's a purpose here for you. God has chosen you to be that generational curse breaker in your family. There's greater coming and you have to posture yourself to receive greater. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Father, I thank you for everything that you're doing in this season. That everyone that's online, Father, everyone that's in this building, that you begin to touch them exceedingly, abundantly above. That they have a true experience from you. That your spirit will dwell with them in this season. That you will flow through them freely, Father God. Let them experience you like they never experienced you before. Let them not lack in this season, but let them come closer into your, into your spirit. Let your combined fill their homes. Let your combined fill their homes, Father. That I prophetically decree and declare that they will get out the walls and get out the confinements of the world. But to see you as the big God that you are, the sovereign God that you are, the holy God that you are, the omnipresent and the omnipotent God that you are, all-knowing God, the Elohim God, the Jehovah God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of everything under the earth and of the heavens, the God of peace. Let them know who you are, Father. And as they leave this place today, I pray protection, peace, and abundance. And those who are seeking salvation or baptism, that they come to the altar, Father, so that we can get them back and wash away all the sins so they can be renewed and become a new creature. That they become a new creature that believes in you, Father. And your son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. And listen, we just want to remind you guys that we got some events coming. On the 31st of uh, March here at 7.30 p.m., we'll be having our marriage night. So spread the word so that everyone can, um, can be in attendance. It's going to be a powerful night. Me and my wife are going to be two of the four panelists. We're going to have food as well, some snacks for you guys, but also... On the vision night after service, right here, after service from 1 to 2 p.m., we're going to have vision night. I'm going to do more vision casting because I know we have more members that have come. If you know anyone that wants to know about Reveal Church and what our vision is for this church as we grow, that please invite them so they can understand where we're going because there's power in them understanding online as well. If you know someone that was going to be a part of this ministry that wants to become part of this vision of this ministry here that God is birthing in Douglasville, Georgia. Make sure they're here next Sunday at uh, 1 p.m. Matter of fact, invite them to service so they can experience everything that we're doing that day. And I just want to say thank you for everyone that has accepted this call that's a part of this ministry, that has sold into our ministry to help our ministry grow and do the work of the Lord in this very season. So I thank you for those who have done and thank you for it in advance for those who are coming. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.